Hello and welcome back to my DIY BMS project. This is the first of a series of videos on how to order, build and program the DIY BMS. Uh, in this video we will be focusing on the building. The DIY BMS system consists of a single controller and modules are then connected to it. It's the job of the modules to monitor each cell in the battery bank. There have been a few module designs released, usually in an attempt to make these as easy to build as possible. Although the boards have different layouts, they all do exactly the same thing and use the same code. On the left we have the original version 4 board. This is ideal if you want to build and solder the entire board yourself. It uses the surface mount parts which are not too difficult to solder um, and it's quite easy to handle. After I made version 4, JLC PCB started doing a very cost effective assembly service. A number of the parts I was using were not available from that service so I modified the design to use parts that were in the catalogue and this makes the board very low cost to manufacture. Let's call this type of board 4.1. It looks very similar to version 4. You can tell the difference though by the smaller service mount parts and they don't have the test point 2 on them either. These boards are not available anymore because they were replaced by version 4.2. This introduced a number of changes again to reduce the cost. Now the larger resistors have gone and replaced with lots of smaller ones. You wouldn't want to solder these by hand so the assembly service makes light work of these for you. Unfortunately, during the design of the boards, two parts got swapped over. Um, they were R19 and R20. So if you have this uh, particular design, please take the time to swap these two parts over. You'll need to unsolder them both and swap them over. These two parts control the temperature the module senses when it's balancing, so it's very important that the thermistor is as close to possi as possible to the resistor pack. If you don't swap the parts over, you should run the uh, balancing temperature at much lower value to compensate. The final board is 4.21. This is the current version on GitHub and includes the fix for the thermistor being in the wrong place. You can see R19 has moved into the middle of the balance resistors. This design is best if you don't want to fully solder your own modules. So to recap, if you want to solder everything yourself, then version 4 is the one to use. And if you want someone else to do it for you, in this case JLC PCB, then use 4.21. Any of these boards can be mixed and matched together. As I mentioned, fundamentally, they are all the same design and the same code. Let's take a look at the GitHub repository so I can show you where the design files are. We can then look at how to order from JLC PCB. There are two GitHub repositories for this project, one for the hardware and one for the software. If we take a look at the hardware repo, the link should be on the screen now. The modules and controller PCBs were designed using KiCad 5 and the full source code is available to download, but you don't need to worry about this if you just want to order some boards. The files for version 4 module are in the master branch, whilst the 4.21 module are in the JLC PCB assembly branch. You can swap branches using the drop down menu. So let's assume you want to order some 4.21 modules from JLC PCB. These are almost fully assembled. I almost forgot to say I'm not actually sponsored by JLC PCB and other suppliers are available and they can build PCBs for you. So to begin, we swap to the JLC PCB assembly branch. The easiest way to get the files is to download the complete archive. So if you click the green clone or download button and then select download zip. Save the zip file to your computer, extract the zip contents and open the folder. Inside there are two folders, circuit and ESP controller circuit. The circuit folder is for the module and the other is the controller. Now let's open up the JLC PCB website. If you don't already have an account with JLC PCB, uh, create one now and log in because it saves you time later. If we scroll down to SMT assembly and quote now, click add the Gerber file. Now find the folder we just extracted and go into the circuit folder and then the Gerber folder. There should be a Gerber.zip file, you can upload that. Uh, there's no need to pre-configure the options on the screen. JLC will work out the dimensions of the PCB automatically for you. Choose the quantity you want. The assembly service will only make up to 50 boards at a time, but you probably won't need this many anyway. If we leave all the options at the default, um, so further down the page we click specify a location on the remove order number option. Scroll then a little bit further and select SMT assembly. 
select assemble top side and tooling holes should be added by customer. On the next page we need to upload two files. The first is the BOM or bill of materials. This has been carefully selected to only use parts available from the JLC PCB assembly service. Upload the v4bomjlc.csv file and the next is the CPL file which contains the component placements. So after a few seconds the website will now give us a list of all the parts that make up the module. The key thing here is to ensure all the parts are listed with confirmed. If they're not then the part is out of stock and the board would be built without that, part, but without that particular part so please be warned you may have to solder them on manually. Um, if a part is not in stock it may be better just waiting for it to become in stock before you order your boards. In the case here the at tiny chip isn't available. This chip was only recently added to the catalogue at JLC PCB. However this part is easy, easy to hand solder um, and uh, slightly cheaper from other suppliers so I'm going to continue without it. Now we see a photo of the board and where the parts are going to be placed. You can zoom into this and to see more detail. The important th check here is that everything is aligned. Look for the red dots aligning with pin 1 and the labels being the right way around. You can see the main that, that tiny chip is going to be missing. Okay, so now we've got the module board built. We save that to the cart. And we can then add a new item. So now we're going to add the controllers in. So again, find the Gerber files that we need. These are in a uh, different folder. That's on the screen now. And once again, we, we find the controller gerber.zip and add that to JLC. You only need one controller per um, setup, so um, you only need to look at that on the PCB quantity. So just leave that at five, which is the minimum. Again, we scroll right the way down to the bottom and select SMT assembly and assemble top side again. Uh, this time I'm only going to do two boards built because um, it saves the cost of that. Confirm that through. And we should get a, uh, another screen to add in the BOM and CPL files. So again, we just repeat the uh, same situation that we did earlier, but uh, slightly different file names this time. And click next. So again, we've got all the parts there. Everything's in stock this time, so it should be fairly straightforward to build. And here's the preview of the board. Um, there aren't many components on this. Most of them are through holes, so you, you're going to have to solder these manually anyway. Um, if you're okay with soldering iron, you might be better off actually just um, buying these as empty boards and ordering the parts yourself. Um, because we only need one board, it's quite expensive to uh, buy through JLC. And save that back to the cart. So now we've got our two boards in our cart we can then carry on through uh, the ordering process and uh, finalize that and check out and hopefully in a few weeks time you will get a parcel through the door with your JLC PCB ordering. The pre-assembled PCBs will be almost complete but you'll still need to manually solder on some of the connectors like the GS JST connectors um, so you're going to need some of the parts that are listed on the screen here uh, particularly the JST sockets uh, make sure you get the right angled ones of those um, uh, make more sense on this board. You're only going to need the pin headers if you want to um, use the external sensors, um, so a thermistor sensor, that sort of stuff. Uh, you're definitely going to need some cables to link each of the modules together and the controllers together. So um, all of that, obviously, you, you, you're going to need a solder and soldering iron. I've also found these PCB feet really useful. Uh, they they um, just clip into the holes on the uh, PCBs and give a secure connection. And if you want to use some of the more advanced features of the uh, controller, then the relay board is also really, really good. But make sure you get the 5 volt one. Um, so that's actually the 5 volt on the relays. So the con controller can actually operate that properly. That uh, wraps up this video. But uh, on screen now is a link to the forum. If you've got any questions or problems, uh, happy building. And as usual, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.